Well, episode 6 came out yesterday and I watched it and I think it was fine. Uh, yeah, first the positives, the expanded fight. Yamamoto vs. Yuha looked really impressive. Showing a scene where he even saved Saraki was also something we needed to see because the manga just skipped over it. So we don't lose the... Uh, not to slow the pacing down, but for this case, uh, anime is for the anime. It was necessary. I feel that uh, Yamamoto uh, took Saraki and put him in uh, in a place so he doesn't uh, stay in his way while attacking Yuha. And some, what I liked is the first additional parts to the where they exchanged blows until Yuha was uh, forced to draw his weapon, and before Yamamoto released his bunker, a few scenes from the manga were put before uh, Yamamoto released his bunker to show. Things have changed to build up the Bankai, which is much better than than in the manga, much better than than in the, the manga version. So uh, the anime did a really good job to remove a lot of unnecessary dialogue and uh, focus more on the action, which was really necessary. However, despite that, they still had left some info dumps. Like, for instance, why did Yamamoto not? Why did Yamamoto uh, release this freaking Bankai despite knowing the enemy can steal Bankais? And his explanation, uh, I guess you can think that he knows that. Ichigo's bunker can be stolen, and he assumes his bunker can be stolen too for a certain reason. But that's just a basis assumption. So, it just ended up making him incompetent. But let's assume uh, he he hit the bull's eyes, so you uh, can't steal his bunker. Why the hell does he explain every single ability in detail? I mean, fine, you can explain the first ability because uh, the, the enemy got cocky thinking, okay, all your powers is focused on your sword. That means I, unless, uh, all, you, I, uh, all I have to do is defeat you before you can even touch me with it. I guess, I guess that is a fine a trick to a, a, to make the enemy forget about a certain thing but uh, Yuha didn't at uh, even attempt to steal his Bankai so it doesn't really help much so um, what else uh, uh, what bothered me is I guess I can somewhat tolerate that CGI was used for another Bankai ability that summons a bunch of corpses to fight in uh, fa for Yamamoto. What I cannot tolerate is the sound effects used for that scene, which kind of sounded really stupid, like not like Bones sound in an anime. I know they used something else as a substitute for breaking bones they can't always break bones or would break somebody's bones just to hear some noises but I will try to replicate the sound which it sounded like somebody was playing with plastic and maybe my noise reduction program will cut it out it didn't sound exactly like that, but it sounded like plastic and somebody breaking crackers. 
like the sets sets that took me out of the episode, but everything else was animated fine in section was impressive. Uh, what wasn't so impressive, like I said, was the... Uh, I already have a big problem with the Bankai stealing medallion. It, it was obviously done to show off Yamamoto's Bankai before and find a reason for him to lose, but I think you could have done something much better, like, let's say, the, it, it, let's remove the Bankai stealing medallion. Uh, Yamamoto is uh, exhausted his powers to defeat the one stun Ritter thinking he's the boss using his Bankai and the real boss after the Bankai dissolves the real boss strikes uh, a surprise attack where he can't defend himself and makes a wound where if he releases his Bankai he dies or gets a uh, or endangers himself there to a point that releasing his Bankai won't be enough to win. Because that pretty much we will see that Yamamoto pretty much gave up on fighting and was killed. Um, was there something else was in my head? I recorded this and I forgot to activate my voice for a noise reduction program. I know I have to repeat everything I was thinking about for the uh, second time. So yeah, another problem was where Yamamoto explained the reason his Bankai is so dangerous is that if he doesn't finish off Yuha uh, immediately the entire soul society will be destroyed. But then you have a scene where he distanced himself from you, you, her, and to emotionally torture him in a scene. Uh, just for that, before. Uh, he, so he. Yeah, it's, it's just stupid. Just said, you, her, comes to him to deliver the finishing blow, he distances himself to uh, so Yuha gets an emotional struggle with the skeletons because they are some of them are his uh, former allies which he supposed to care about and the problem obviously is that if your ability is to destroy is so dangerous that it can destroy the entire soul society if the fight goes on for too long. Why are you uh, dragging out the fight for no reason? It makes no freaking sense. And that's a really stupid scene in that regard. But I guess nobody in the writer's room thought about it because how impressive the uh, dialogue from Yamamoto sounds. Why he did that and uh, why it was justified um, to express to, to share this feeling with you huh? and I guess that's pretty much it and with this the uh, highlight and the best part of the first invasion is over and like I said the second invasion is pretty bad with a few good scenes a few good moments, like Rukia will get a really good moment, Ichigo will learn a bit the truth about himself, which is during the downtime between the two invasions, which honestly is, I find rather boring, it has a few decent scenes, but it's more like build up to, for a bigger payoff that maybe comes depends on uh, how you view the series and the invasion obviously isn't over we have one good moment which will sadly get ruined by the second invasion so I honestly don't think it's worth watching 
the rest, but I will still look, uh, watch it to see those really good moments. With this, I think I can end the video. The epi fourth, fourth episode was also really great, showing the stern as a threat enough where the characters are forced to use Bankai instead of us being info dumped they are stronger than the cats which we will see is not really true and one more thing is episode 5 I did not mention a single time episode 5 was completely lame and there was another Bankai reveal because one of the stern readers do the Bankai of Sasaki baby honestly never cared about and just figured out he has a Bankai in this arc even in the manga it was foreshadowed that he, he told us before is we saw the stern ritual who stole it that he has a Bankai but we could have pretty much guessed that and it looked l more lame than most shikais, I literally every shikai I have seen had a much more badass reveal and fight. Even Ikaku's lame ass shikai was more impressive than this bankai in both visually and in terms of pre uh, presentation. So, yeah, I, whatever. Did I forget anything else? I am keep repeating that I know and that if I had a script that would be better, but yeah, is it even worth is it even worth watching this arc? Because it seems like it, we got additional scenes but most of them just don't feel like I don't know. Rose Still didn't get the fight against Nanana, so I guess Nanana's abilities uh, we will never see in combat, and we have just to guess, I guess, how the fight went and how he would fight. We see his abilities, he will appear a lot, but don't do shit, but get defeated off screen or defeat someone off screen it's all just too random well i hope you have a nice day and tell me what uh, how you found how you saw what you thought about this episode see you